Welcome back. We've been talking today about exploring the past through archaeology. Joining us now is Professor Joe Stumpf of the Montgomery College History and Political Science Department, really a uh, archaeology professor, but we got big departments here at Montgomery College, <laughs> and still with us from the first segment again, Professor Jeannie Robinson. Welcome back, uh, Jeannie, and Joe, yes. welcome to the show. Glad to be here. We want to talk a little bit about how you bring the experiences that you have in the field of archaeology into the classroom. I know that you have spent some time, a uh, number of uh, digs in Greece, and really have a chance to bring this into the classroom. Talk about bringing that, your experience into the classroom. Uh, it comes in almost every day. Um, I teach classes in ancient and medieval history, and students who sign up for these history classes sometimes have been led to believe that history is a relatively dry discipline, <laughs> and no. that we are, yeah, and <laughs> that, uh, they're going to be looking at old dusty records and at best perhaps a bit of literature and indeed you can use that as a starting point. Uh, but with an archaeological background I can also uh, indicate to them that the study of history is also the study not just of kings and queens and dukes and earls and this kind of thing but of the common person. And archaeology acts as a sort of corrective because those who write about history are writing for a certain group, the educated, those who can read, after all. Uh, it's, there's more than a little bit of truth to say that history is written by the winners for the winners, and you can use archaeology to write about other folks, uh, those who are disenfranchised, those who are poor, those who are foreign, those who are slaves. It can help to uh, fill in the gaps, and when we talk about resources uh, at the disposal of the historian, they have to be made aware right from the get-go that you can use the artifact, you can use the archaeological record to supplement the written record. Mm -hmm. And you've been digging up some of your own artifacts uh, across the world. Tell us a little bit about that. Oh gosh. Um, well, I've been lucky enough to participate on a number of excavations. Um, overseas I've worked on uh, a site in Italy and a site for several years in the Middle East which was fascinating um, not just for the material that's coming out of the ground but also uh, the people that you are working with because you have local teams that you work with as well and currently uh, I'm engaged in a three-year project in Greece um, it's a fascinating project it's at a place called Cancria which is a port city an ancient Roman port uh, we are working on a Roman cemetery mm. and therefore we can find out a lot of information about the inhabitants, needless to say, physical characteristics, this kind of thing, but also religious characteristics, how they choose to be buried, how they choose to be remembered, are there any changes in pattern? There are, in fact, we have a change from cremation, as to say burning your dead, to inhumation, as to say burying your dead. And one of the uh, goals of the project is to try and figure out exactly how this took place, uh, the time frame that it took place, and perhaps to get at some of the underlying reasons why it took place. You kind of joked about it before, but so you've been a tomb raider, so to speak. <laughs> In a manner of speaking, although I don't want to push that comparison too far, <laughs> our particular site has in fact been heavily looted. Uh, there are real tomb raiders out there, and often is not archaeologists are left to sort of pick up the pieces and of course the looters are after the treasures they're after the nice shiny pieces of things which they will then put onto the antiquities market but uh, opening up these tombs and pulling nice things out of it is akin to opening up a book and just ripping pages out of it and hoping that you've still got the information but you don't you lose the context you lose so much about it and so we sometimes have to kind of clean up the mess and, and figure out what they left behind. And lucky for us, they oftentimes do leave a lot of information behind. We can Let's sure. turn to Jeannie and see mm -hmm. what um, your experience is in Guatemala, a different part of the world, and how you bring that back in the classroom. Wh what kind of digs have you had a chance to experience there? Well, one of the ones I like to bring into the classroom is the one where we dug test pits or fairly large excavations to six meters in depth which is 18 feet mm. and I had visitors come to the site and they'd look over this big deep hole and say how did all that material get down there we live up here so why how did this happen so that's a neat one to bring into the classroom because the students really have to think about 
what's going on through time to make that archaeological mm -hmm. site. The earliest materials at the bottom, the later material at the top, but there have been all kinds of natural and cultural processes going on to make the different layers of that archaeological site. That was a neat excavation for looking for early material, uh, but I've been working more recently on ritual sites. One is by a cave and one is a rock art site. And so a totally different kinds of behaviors go on there than at some, some of the ones that were agricultural and sedentary where sedentary peoples live. And, and this site is, is Mayan in background. Right. It's Highland Maya, so I've been in the highlands of the Maya region. And one of the things about that is there's so many different kinds of sites that are can be explored. There are elite residential sites, there are some of the early sedentary people, and then ritual sites. So we're learning a lot about different kinds of contexts and different time periods. And when you're on a, a project like this, mm -hmm. it must take um, well, a lot of patience <laughs> and, and so many volunteers mm -hmm. to sort of make sure that you're, you know, not accidentally hurting something mm -hmm. and finding mm -hmm. minute right. details, I guess. Right. So we usually work collaboratively with students. I've had students from the U.S. and I've had Guatemalan mm -hmm. students work with us. And then we usually train workmen and sometimes you can hold on to those over many seasons. So they're very knowledgeable about what mm -hmm. to do. And usually when things get very sensitive, we have our best person, you know, spend time. And again, that's the more detail-oriented person with the fine tools. Mm. So, you know, it ranges. We work as a very cooperative group, you know, big team effort, hopefully very cordial and helpful to one another. And I always tell people, you're not out there alone, you know, we're here together to make this work. So, you know, everybody lends their different talents. And Get a little teamwork. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. Lesson it's much more fun too. that way, too. Yeah. yeah. Joe, when do you feel a real sense of accomplishment? I mean, when you're when you're involved, uh, you know, in, in uh, some sort of project, and you really feel like we we've uncovered something that's important here. Uh, boy, in a number of ways, um, there is of course the material that you're uncovering and the information derived from the material. But speaking personally, uh, I feel the most accomplishment when perhaps one of the students that I'm working with stops to talk with me about what we're finding and what this means and and you can sort of almost literally see the light bulb go off mm -hmm. in their head and they start applying archaeological thinking to other places even back home you know they apply the same kinds of perspectives that archaeologists use to their home environment um, and in the case of working overseas, sometimes you're working with the natives there. When I was in the Middle East, I was working with a, a number of Arabs, Arab youths, uh, who seemed, at least at first, to have no real interest in the actual mm -hmm. work. It's, it's a job, it's a paycheck, and that's why they were there. Uh, but over the course of several weeks, they become fascinated by what we're finding, and they draw uh, a link, a figurative link between themselves and the way they live and the way these people hundreds if not thousands of years ago lived. And so when I see that, that is very rewarding to me. Mm -hmm. I, I have 